Hello, and welcome to As the CMMC Churns. I'm Matt Titcomb, the CEO of Peak InfoSec, unauthorized C3PO, and I'm also a CMMC Provisional Assessor. Today's episode is The Seven CMMC Stages of Grief. So, why are we talking about this? Well, fundamentally, it's all about your brain. And not only your brain, but everybody in your organization's brain. Because what's going on in here, it's all about the way you think and the way your brain operates. Now, when we talk about this, there is the distinction of a left and right brain. And the way your brain processes and handles things actually is split. One of the interesting parts is your left brain is very logical. This is where all the structured, all the engineers, Uh, As my wife will tell me, I'm very strong over here on this side when it comes to figuring out things and getting things done and taken care of. The left side, the right side, pardon me, is the emotional side. This is where the feelings come from, senses, creativity, imagination, intuition. This is the holistic perspective of what is going on. Now, this is also an area where the creativity of doing these things comes from me in here. And my wife also say, I'm a little bit emotionally deficient on the right side of my brain. A little bit too much of an engineer. But this is critical in understanding how the CMMC stage seven stages of grief actually apply. Because as engineers, technicians, and people that are obviously running businesses, we tend to be left brain focused. However, Don't underestimate the power of the right brain, really, when it comes down to it. Now, we all enjoy Marvel and the Hulk, etc. The Hulk lives by the power of him being angry. And when he's angry, he transforms. Now, that same power, unfortunately, that anger, also other things associated with that are fear, anxiety, depression. That is all something that also comes from the right side of the brain. Now, I don't suffer from depression. I have family members who do. This is a huge, incredibly powerful function that when your brain gets caught in that anxiety and depression loop, it can drive you to incredibly dark places really fast. And unfortunately, that's all on that right side of the brain. And the only way to get people out of there aside from medication is to help to pull them over and engage the left side get balance back and harmony between your brain is some of the methods used to keep people who struggle in that area from suffering. Now, again, this is a really powerful side of the brain that actually is probably affecting a lot more of us who are engineers, nerds, who are very left-sided focused than you want to realize. So do not underestimate this. Now, the reality is this plays into the CMMC seven stages of grief. And let's talk about them. Well, the CMMC seven stages of grief are actually a psychological model for dealing with grieving, loss. And that's why it applies here. We're talking about a loss, a change to the way you've set up your business, the way you operate, your culture, fundamentally who you are as an organization is suffering. Now, when this first comes out, there's shock. Oh, we have to do what? Then there's the no. No, we don't. That doesn't apply to us. And this is why our first question is, do you have any DFARS clauses in your contracts? We kind of get you over that initial denial phase. Then typically, we get caught in the loops between denial, anger, and bargaining quite a bit. Uh, We don't have to do that. That doesn't apply to us. No, that control's right. Uh, No, FIPS doesn't apply. No, we've done MFA. We use Okta. All of those things are going on in that. Those three blocks are the most common phases we sit in as assessors and and as a company that helps to transform transform businesses when they're getting ready for CMMC because it is a business transformation exercise. We are changing your culture. Bargaining is trying to find that way out. Then eventually you get to depression. Now, this is not the full-blown depression. This is more like, dude, I'm bummed out, man. We actually really got to do this crap. You know, you're kind of, huh, 
I can't fight, I'm not gonna win, so I'm either gonna choose to do this or not. Now, many times when we're in that de depression phase and the realization, this is also, we have the hard conversation with businesses and they're like, well, we really have to do this. This isn't that big part of our business. At that point in time, the conversations we have tend to be, if it's not a significant portion of your business, maybe you want to move out of this as, you know, supporting DOD as a part of your business process and your revenue streams because it, the ROI is not there. But for many businesses where it's a majority portion of the workload, they're kind of going, yeah, we really do need to do this. So let's just go ahead and make that leap in. Now, testing and bargaining can be easily mixed up. Now, testing is typically, what if we do this? Bargaining is, well, this should work. And it's kind of tinged with a little bit of anger. Um, and, you know, there's frustration and you're still in that emotional tie between those two phases. So as an organization, we have to be very careful and it is hard. And many times we get it wrong, just to be honest, um, when somebody is between bargaining and testing. But we do always kind of like, okay, we're always letting them know, well, this is the requirement. You know, we're just letting you know. Now, when we've taken organizations through this, I put the Hulk up there previously, but the reality is I've had clients tell me, Matt, I'm feeling an awful lot like the Hulk right now and I want to go smash you. And I get it. It's not personal. We're just delivering the bad news. And so at this point in time, that's how those emotions are playing out while we're assessing your organization. Now, the interesting part, these emotions play out organizationally, individual and individually. We will literally help to transform the organization going through these and then work with different individuals as they're in different phases. The interesting part is, especially the technicians, the, the analysts, the people that are really closely involved, they can actually be in different phases for different controls. Literally, I have people that accept the change for this control, but we hit MFA. No, we don't have to do that. Oh no, you're wrong on this. And, and, and they are arguing, they're bargaining over control that we're telling them this is the requirement, but they're finding other ones. So, you know, that's some of the dynamics we as an organization that deal with change management during this process also have to recognize is where people are in different in, in respect to their controls. It's weird, but that's how the CMMC seven stages of grief, grief fundamentally play out. Now, where do they really play out? Well, this diagram is our um, overall methodology we use in helping clients to get ready for CMMC. And fundamentally, the consulting side is pretty much the way you go through for getting ready for any type of information security framework. Well, we're gonna first experience the seven stages of grief in the gap assessment phase. That's pretty normal and you'd expect that. The interesting part is we see it show up in planning. Why? All of a sudden, the chief of finance is involved. Profits are being affected. Future spending and planning and all those things are now coming into play from a different perspective. And many times the team, dyma the, the team dynamic um, that we went through in the gap assessment has changed. And again, now we get back to human dynamics. This is all about humans, unfortunately is that changes and we boom, jump right back into the seven stages of grief. It's a faster phase. Uh, we can typically walk through it faster, but it does reoccur here. And it is just one of those things we recognize. Now, the seven stages are fundamentally worked out in the remediation phase where we've not only in acceptance, we're actually implementing. We're moving past the seven stages and we're now actually getting through it. Unfortunately, there's one last place they can pop up. That's actually in your actual conformity assessment. Um, whether that is the formal one where we're coming in to do your certification event or mock assessment. If you really don't understand the requirements in getting ready for CMMC and you've brought us in to do one of those and it goes really off the rail, 
there's going to be a lot of anger. There's going to be a lot of denial. There's going to be a lot of bargaining. It's probably going to be some finger pointing going on, just to be honest. Um, and a lot of this is just simple expectation management. Getting through a certification event is hard and there will be errors made on your side that will be discovered. That's to be expected. The things you can do, have somebody outside of your organization do a mock assessment. Just go through and see what you would expect. If you're large enough, you probably really want to do that. If you're not large enough, work with an expert in the gapping and planning and, and remediation phases to make sure you're really ready so you don't go back into CMMC again in the assessment, I'm sorry, into the seven stages of grief in the assessment phase. There's also another thing going on that many people are aware of, but let's talk about it. So we talked previously about this acquisition timeline for when CMMC is gonna come out. Right now, we're expecting uh, the interim rule to come into effect in May, June timeframe of 2023 or fiscal year 23. The reality is the contracts will actually go into effect in fiscal year 24. There's an awful lot of the defense industrial based contractors out there, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if this is you, you're in denial. You're in bargaining. You're hoping somebody's going to call somebody's senator somewhere and make this go away. It's not going to happen. It's coming out. All the requirements are happening this year for the DFARS Clause 7019, the DFARS Clause 7020 go final this December. And then when that interim rule comes out and it's on target to do so, all of this goes into effect. Well, once that happens, welcome back to shock. And then probably there's going to be mad, insane panic, a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness, and suddenly the loss of contracts because all the primes have been telling you to get ready. You've been blowing it off. Now you're not on the team that, you know, the, the, the end kids that they pick first to play on the team. So this is coming. Unfortunately, many people are ignoring the seven stages of grief in this area. So be aware of it and plan for it and reduce it now. So let's sum up. The seven stages of grief really are a real thing. They do happen. We run into them with all of our clients we're helping, whether we're actually helping them on a consulting side or when we're working with them to get ready or going through their actual formal audit. Expect it. Um, do, not understand, do not underestimate the power of this to hold you back. When it comes to culture change, things that we get pushback when we're helping with clients, it's typically this. Um, finance is one of them when you're in that planning phase, but behind that's kind of, well, do we really have to? And they're ignoring and denying and pushing off and avoiding. That's the seven stages of grief. Now, overcoming it is going to be critical. If you can overcome it organizationally through your gap assessment and through your planning phase, and additionally also help to facilitate your different staff people through those phases, it's a real struggle to get through this. Now, if you're stuck and you're struggling, bring in experts like Peak InfoSec. There's a lot of companies that actually do um, help you to implement the requirements, but understanding implementing the requirements and doing the culture change, not many of us. So again, this is one of our niches. If you're really stuck, give us a call. We can most likely help you and help you to kind of work through these areas. Now, likewise, you're going to experience these stages during your gap analysis, your POAM development, and a mock or formal conformity assessment if it goes bad. So expect that from your staff and your people and help them to work through it. Lastly, for those that are denying CMMC is gonna come into effect, well, get ready to be shocked in reality. It's coming and it's gonna be an emotional upset. I'm sorry for that, but that's the way it'll be. Again, I'm Matt Titcomb with Peak InfoSec. Thanks for joining us for the As the CMMC Churns.